Today, I'm gonna show you how I color grade my 8-bit footage to go from looking like this to this. How's it going? My name is Dylan and welcome back to a new video. Today I want to share with you how I color grade all my videos. This video is mainly for people struggling to color grade 8-bit footage as that's mostly what I work with now. And I will say from time to time it is a struggle to get the colors the way you want them to look especially when you don't have that much flexibility. But if you use these tips I'm about to share with you, hopefully you'll have a better time editing and color grading 8-bit footage. By the way, this video isn't just for 8-bit footage as you can use these tips for all of your footage that you use if you're using anything beyond 8-bit, but since that's all I have to work with, that's how I'm gonna show you. Now, as you may know, I use my Canon EOS R. I made a review on it last year. If you still wanna check that out, I think it still holds up for 2022. But with this camera, you can only shoot 8-bit internally in C-Log. The highlight roll-off is not that great in just C-Log, and if you're not exposing for the shadows, it can end up looking pretty bad because of the 8-bit depth. Even if you want to go for a darker exposure in camera for a creative look, it might not work that well because the footage tends to break in the shadows. Now the reason for that is definitely mostly because of the 8-bit depth, but if you know how to properly expose, you can still get some great looks. Now first off, I want to share with you how I properly expose my shots with this camera because I tend to not see that too often on YouTube, so hopefully I can share with you my tips on just properly exposing and then that can help you as well. There are timestamps below as well, so if you just want to fast forward to the color grading, you can do so. Now I tend to overexpose my shots one to two stops, so then I can reduce the noise in the shadows and bring it down in post. Also, I always make sure to use the histogram to make sure I'm not blowing out the highlights when possible and making sure that there's enough detail in the shadows so there's not that much of that breaking look when you're shooting. You always wanna make sure that there's enough detail in the shadow so it's not breaking, and you can always turn it back down in the color correcting process or when you're grading. Now if you have the EOS R and you wanna use the same camera settings that I use in my camera, here they are. I'm always in C-Log on 8-bit, color matrix is at neutral, all characteristics at zero for strength, saturation, and hue, since I want to do all that color correcting and grading in post. Now once you have all your footage cut and you edit it down, it's time to get to the fun part of color correcting and grading. So I use DaVinci Resolve for everything I do with my videos from the editing to the color correcting, grading, and even the sound design. I used to use Premiere Pro all throughout college and a little bit after, but when you realize you're paying a monthly fee and it's you know quite expensive to be doing that, DaVinci Resolve just looks that much more enticing. Now you can pay the one-time fee for DaVinci Resolve Studio, but the free version has everything you need to get started in editing and color grading. You really don't don't need to upgrade unless you want some of those bonus features that comes with it. Also, DaVinci Resolve just works so much smoother and much better on my computer than Premiere ever did. Now for this video, you won't need the studio version at all. I'm mostly going to focus on just the free version and everything that's in that. I will share some things that you can use in the studio to, you know, give a little more character to your shots, but I'm still learning myself with the full version of that, so maybe I'll make another video in the future with that. So today I want to show you guys how I color graded the beginning intro clip and two other clips that I also have. So to start out I usually put like 11 to 12 notes when I'm color grading and then see if I need more or less depending on the footage. Now there are many ways you can color grade but this is just my way of working and you can do this in different orders and you get different results by doing that but this is just how I've been doing it so far. Now for this first note I'm doing my best to go from a log footage to a rec 709 like type. I don't use any LUTs because I haven't found any that really works with my way of coloring so this is usually how I do it. I'd bring down the lift and sometimes the gamma a little or raise it depending you know, I can also touch the gain to see how that looks, and then I always bring down the offset a little bit, or I try to see if I can start color balancing a little bit now, so later on I don't have to do too much in the grading. I also bring down the highlights so then my face looks more evenly lit instead of it just being, you know, kind of overexposed and of course I increase the contrast and move the pivot a little to see how that looks. And you definitely have to add saturation in there. And I tend to mess around with the temp and tint to see if I can get a good white balance to start out. Now in this next node, I tend to mess with the curve a little to see if I can get a you know, a little style going in already before I start grading. And then in the fourth note, I tend to mess around my primary colors and see if I can shift the hues to where I want them, mess around with the saturations of each color and the luminance. I try not to push and pull too much because with 8-bit footage, you can see it break way easier than, you know, 10-bit or anything higher than that. So I try not to change the colors that much 
and try to get it right in camera before so I don't have to do that much push and pull when I'm color correcting and grading. Now for these next three nodes, I actually use a parallel mixer so I can get a little vignetting going on and darken some parts that I wanna do later on after I do the color grading. Now we're gonna leave the parallel mixer aside for a moment and just focus on the skin. So here we're gonna use the qualifier to just focus on the skin, make sure it's all corrected and the skin tones don't look any funny, you know, there's no funny business going on. But if everything looks good, we're just gonna use the qualifier to reduce the detail in the skin so it looks a little softer and smoother. Now in this next node is when I get into the color grading. So for here, I like to drop my lift towards the teal and bluish tones, you know, so I can get a little orange and teal going on. So that's where I move it down to teal. In the gamma, I increase it into the orange side a little more. I try not to do too much. You can't push it a little more, but with this, I want to be a little subtle and just keep it clean. Now in the same note, I go to my log wheels and mess with the shadows so I can take away some of that greenish tint that's going on so I can make it look a little more black. So things that should be black in the image do and there's not a weird tint happening. I also mess around with my midtones, giving it a little more orange so it comes out a little more. Now, as I said before, I tend to not push it that much since I just want to keep it clean and not do too much to the 8-bit footage so it's not breaking apart. So in the next node, I'm just adjusting that look that I put. So I'm looking at the curves and seeing maybe I will go into the edible spleens and just you know, increase a little contrast in the curves and see what else I can do just to clean it up. And then in this last node, I put on the glow effect. In the glow effect, I change the composite type to soft light and I bring the global blend down. Then I just mess around with the shine threshold and the spread and see what works also with the gain gamma and see different things I can try out. Also the saturation as well. Now, if you have the studio version, you can definitely go back to the first note and then add some noise reduction if you want to. I haven't been doing that and I still gotta like mess around with it to see what I can do to get a really nice clean image going on. But now I usually go back to those three nodes that I put aside for the parallel mixer. And for that first one, I want to bring down the exposure on the wall because I feel like it's a little too bright and it, you know, takes away too much attention from, you know, me and the subject. So I go into my windows and create a shape around that wall just to lower the exposure and then I feather it out a bit. And then I just bring down the exposure and the gamma and I think it comes out really nice and it doesn't mess up the image at all. The footage doesn't break and I think it's a good look. And then in the other two, I'm kind of making a little of a vignette in some parts and darkening some areas of the image just so the focus can go straight towards me and not anything distracting that could be in the background. And then that's pretty much it for this clip. I don't think there's anything else I need to do. You know, you could always, you know, change things and see what could be added, but that's pretty much it for this one. Now for these next two clips, I'm just gonna show you what each node does and how it affects the image so you can see what you're doing when you're color grading. So you see in the first node that I'm working in, I'm just taking that log back into a more Rec 709 look. And then in the next one, I try to make a curve to give it a little more character and contrast. Those next three again are just for like a little vignetting, darkening some of the edges to bring more focus into the center. And then the next node is to color grade just like I did before when I'm lowering the lifts into the teal and trying to get the gammas back into the orange. And then for here, I actually messed around with the gain just to bring a little more warmth into it and a little bit of the offset where I'm changing that as well. And then in the same node, I just go into the log wheels and then mess around with the shadows so I don't have that green tint going on and see if it needs anything else there. And the next note, again, I'm just adjusting the curve to see if I can get a little more contrast going on and make it pop. And then this next note, I actually went to the blur area and then increased it in the red so I can get a little more red glowish look going on and soften that up just to add a little more of a character style look. I don't think it does too much, but I wanted to try it out here and I think it just, you know, adds a little bit more to it. And then of course, in the last node, I just add on that glow. And as you can see, it makes a big difference when I turn it on and off. And I think it really adds a nice look to the overall image.
Now for this last clip, it's a nice look of New York City from a rooftop. Now for here, the first note I'm working in is actually my third one, where I'm going from my log back into a Rec 709 type look. The next note again is just messing with the curves and the primaries of course, just to see if I can change the colors a bit. And then the next four nodes in a parallel mixer, I'm making it so there's a little vignetting going on, bring the focus of course to the center. And then the note after that, I'm doing the color grading where I'm messing with the lift gamma gain and any Thing like that that I want to do to make the image you know give it a little more color and a little more of a style into it and then in the next note I actually adjusted the curves a bit here to give it more of that character feel that I wanted to go for and add a little more contrast and make things pop and you know anything else I wanted to do and then of course in the final note I went back with that glow effect and I just add on to every single clip that I use. It just, it's a great effect to use for anything. Then in this one, if you have the studio version, I was messing around with the halation to add some of that, you know, halation look into the highlights and make it look more film-like. And that's where I also added the grain. I'm still learning how to mess around with it since I'm new to the studio version, but I think it was a nice little bonus to add onto there. And then of course the first note is where you do your noise reduction. And right there is my process for color grading my footage for now, you know, with 8-bit. You know, if you guys want to see other videos in color grading or things like that, definitely let me know. And yeah, thanks for watching. And that's pretty much the end of this video. I hope you guys learned something new in terms of color grading 8-bit footage or just color grading in general. If you guys want, I can make more videos in the future going into more specifics in color grading. But that's pretty much it for this one. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next one.